In the previous video, we have started applying single responsibility principle to split our player code into more specialized classes that we can use inside our player and the player will be only responsible for passing the data to our more specialized classes and the more specialized classes like player movement will be responsible for doing the work on the Unity components that we can use. So for example, the rigid body 2D. Now let's pick up the speed and let's refactor the remaining code. So what we are going to do, let's create a couple of scripts and let's fill them up and refactor the player once and for all to adhere to the single responsibility principle. So let's right click, create new C sharp script. Let's call this player animations. Okay. Next, let's create another one, another script, create new C sharp script. Let's call this player input. Okay, since we have the input inside our in uh, player, we want to extract it into a separate class. Let's right click, create new C sharp script. Let's call it player renderer. Okay. And again, we will need to have a way to interact with our AI agent. So let's right click, create sharp script i'm going to call it player ai interactions okay and for now that's it although we are loading a scene uh, inside our player so let's right click and create another let's call it game manager great so now we have a couple of scripts uh, that we can use to refactor our player into a, a more specialized class that with only one responsibility of passing the data between those smaller classes. So what we are going to do is let's create a new game object in our hierarchy, create game object, right click, and we are going to reset its transform just to make sure that it is in point zero zero zero. Let's call it game manager. Okay, with capital M. And I'm going to drag our game manager script onto it. And let's double tap on the script to open it up. Okay, what we are going to do is delete the update here and I'm going to go to the player script and we can see in the start method we are loading the scene called pre-made level as the additive scene. We do not want to do that in uh, the player so let's cut this, method, this line out. Let's save the player and I'm going to pass it into our game manager into the starts method. Click alt enter on the scene manager to be using Unity Engine Scene Manager management in the as the library, so it is uh, it has appeared at the top of our script, and now our game manager will be responsible for loading the pre-made level into our game. Great. Let's go back to Unity. Okay, we have refactored yet another functionality out of the player script. Let's choose the player in our hierarchy and let's drag the player uh, interactions, player animations, player movement. Uh, it is already on our player, so we do not need to drag it. Player input and player render onto our player game object. So we will be able to now refactor the code into those components and access them through the player script. What we are going to do is let's, for example, start with our render. So let's double tap on player render. Great. Let's delete all the methods here. And I'm going to go to our player. I'm going to put it side by side with our player renderer. And let's see what we need to refactor here. At the top of the player, we are getting the sprite renderer. So let's cut it out from here and let's paste it in, uh, into our player renderer script. Great. Now, what else do we need to do? Let's slide down and see where we have errors in our player script. And we, I can see we have errors with the interact and interact want to access play render flip x. So what we are going to do is in our play render, let's use snippet prop, tap tab twice to create it, and it will create a property, let's call it bool, uh, as the type, tab to move to the name, and let's call it is right flipped. Okay, we are not going to have a set here, but instead in the get we are going to use lambda expression, so equals and greater sign, and we are going to type player renderer, so our variable that we have uh, above, dot flip x. And we are going to simply return this value in our is sprite flipped. So now what we can do is copy the name player renderer, slide up in our player, and we are going to create maybe below the player movement public. 
let's paste the name player render let's call it player render again we can copy the name and get the component in the start method so paste player render equals get component player render okay now we have access to it and what we are going to do is we are going to copy the name slide down and we are, when we need to access this flip x we are going to uh, call player render dot and we are going to is uh, call is right flipped okay this was in the interact method what else where else do we have uh, errors in the move player but this is different we want to set this value so setting the value to the correct value should be done in our player render so we are going to cut out this and let's type player player render and we are going to call render player okay and we need to pass here the movement vector we do not have this method so alt enter and generate this method and now we can paste inside this method the code that we have cut out so if math f dot abs movement vector x is greater than 0.1 f we are going to flip the player render and else we are going to keep it as it was great and we have some more errors in our player script so let's slide down okay this flash red coroutine is unable to access the player render so let's cut it out and paste this code inside our player render and we are using this coroutine inside our receive damage so maybe let's create a new method inside our player render public void flash red and we are going to change the name of the coroutine to flash red coroutine okay and we are going to cut out the start coroutine and stop all coroutines and paste it inside our player render flash red and inside our player receive damage or inside our player script we are going to call player render dot flash red and that's it for the refactoring now we can call the flash red coroutine instead of flash red inside our player render and we should have no more errors okay so now let's go back to unity let's choose the player inside the hierarchy and we need to assign the player render so let's assign the player sprite as the player render so the child of our player game object now we should be able to press play and we have our player we can walk towards our enemy click right mouse button and we can see that our player is flashing indeed red so everything works great okay before we finish let's refactor also the ai interactions so let's open up the player AI interactions and let's move this as the second class open so we can have our player on one side and the player interactions on the other. We are going to delete all the code from the player interactions and AI interactions are interactions with our NPCs. So let's see, we have our raycast point which is exactly for the purpose of interacting with the AI. So I'm going to cut it out, this transform from the player and I'm going to paste it inside our player AI interaction script. Okay, I'm going to make sure that I create the player AI interactions uh, variable inside our player. So public player AI interactions, player AI interactions. Okay, let's copy the name of the variable. Let's get the reference inside our start method equals get component our player AI interactions okay we should be good to go and let's slide down let's see what error uh, are here we have this interact method which clearly is uh, re relying on our player ai interactions so i'm going to actually get rid of it by cutting it out from here from the player and pasting it inside our player interactions okay if we are accessing the player render is right flipped so maybe let's pass to this interact bool is sprite flipped and we are going to copy this and paste it when we are calling the player render is sprite flipped okay and everything else should be working so now let's save it and 
let's find out where we have been calling this. We have been calling this inside the update method. So I'm going to, instead of calling the interact, we are going to call player AI interactions inside the player script and with the lower letter, so the reference val variable. And we are going to call interact. And this is the private method, so let's change it into a public. And let's call interact. And we are going to pass to it our player renderer dot is right flipped. And that's it. So we can see that our player is decreasing in size, the class, and we are only passing the data from one component to another one through the player class, while the other components, like this player interactions, is responsible for shooting the ray, getting the enemy reference value, and then interacting with this enemy. So the player AI interactions script knows exactly how to interact with AI, and the player script only passes to it the is sprite flip variable while not caring how does the player AI interactions do things on its end. Great. So let's save it. Let's go back to Unity. Let's choose the player inside our hierarchy and we will need to assign the transform, which is the raycast point inside our player. So the, the child of our player game object. Let's drag it to our raycast point. I'm going to stop maximizing the game on play and I'm going, I'm going to pl press play to play this game. And let's see if we click, we should see inside our scene view that a raycast is debugged. And if we walk towards this enemy, you can see that it still works. Great. So that's it for this video. In the next one, we are going to finish refactoring the player input. And what we have else uh, here is the player animations. So see you in the next video.